Jackson. Come up, boy, come up. Change out your, all your all your bandages and fix your bum leg for you again. Hmm. Don't want to do that. Well, you know we have to. The doctor has said to. That's what happens, and that's what you get for being a dumb old man, a stupid bitch of an old man, a rich dumb fucker. <laughs> all right, time for your medicine. No. All right, Grandpa, it's time for your medicine. Oh, I don't want to take it that medicine. It fixes medicine. your broken ankle. Mm, I know, but oh, give it here. Open wide. Drink up. Mmm, good. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, that's nasty. Did you swallow it? Mm. Good. See, don't you feel so much better after taking your medicine? Yeah. Alright, good. Oh, that must be the air conditioning boy! Come in, son! Come in! It is hot as hell! So I'm very glad that you're here. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you. You're gonna have to pry me off of this dumb chair because I cannot get off. I'm sweating so hard. Mm -hmm. You can stay there. It's fine. We don't have to move anything. Actually, we're perfectly in a nice Wait. centered location to where we're in frame of this camera that's filming us. Indeed. Okay, so 
You guys like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? To an extent. Sure? Okay. You guys like the Evil Dead movies, right? I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them either. Yeah. I you, love them. <laughs> exactly. You would love them. Probably. Maybe. They're, they're great. I like that. Uh, it's useful. And so, you put Marvel Comics and the Evil Dead movies together, mm -hmm. and you get Ash, or... No, it's uh, Marvel Zombies versus the Army of Darkness. Okay, is, so it 100% is just the blending of the two. Yeah, it honestly it's is. Possibly. Ash Williams, the main character from Army of Darkness and the Evil Dead movies, mm. is somehow transported into the Marvel Universe from a zombified, um, obscure supervillain hero person. He's yeah. kind of an anti-hero. He balances it sometimes. Uh, he's a zombified sentry, which is like some weird superhero. Okay. Uh, who breaks into heaven... And Ash has died for some reason. And so he gets thrown <laughs> into the Marvel Universe. Uh -huh. oh my and, the, God. oh, it's so great. Is it's, it a fan fiction or is it... No, this is an actual okay. published... Okay, it's an official... This is... It's canon? It's, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's its own also, continuity. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. When did this come out? When did this book I, release? I think one, three, three, it, it was yeah. probably the mid to late 2000s. Okay. Uh, it was obviously after the Marvel Zombies line, <laughs> which a lot of people liked. It's it's uh, it's ridiculous in all the best ways. Mm -hmm. It sounds uh, like it. And then this book just maximizes it. It has Ash Williams hitting on Dazzler from the X-Men. Nice. Uh, and Scarlet Witch. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, his doppelganger from the Marvel Universe. I, I forget what his name is. It's not ex it's not exactly Ashley J. Williams. It's like yeah. Ashley H. Williams or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're doing it, the old the good old Marvel was like it's like Superman. S Bizarro Superman. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're like slightly changing something, yeah. Yeah, uh, so his version is like, okay, this the zombie apocalypse has started. I'm going to go out and help people. Mm -hmm. And then he goes out. He sees, like, the actual Ashley J. Williams from, like, the movies and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, oh, man, this is weird. And then he gets axed off by a zombified Howard the Duck. Oh, my gosh. Just, was... like, out of the fucking blue. Yeah. It's great. It's... This entire book is hard to explain if you don't yeah. know... Exactly what's going on. <clears throat> it sounds, it sounds like a real weird one. It is probably weird. not the weirdest. No, it, it's not the weirdest. But if you love like uh, Ash Williams and the Evil Dead, mm -hmm. Sam Raimi kind of comedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. over the top uh, gore, gore fest, and weird sexual innuendos and yeah. stuff like that, mixed with the straight lace make. There, he goes to Latveria at one point, and he's talking to Doctor Doom. He even disguises himself as Doctor Doom at That's one really point. It's, it's all great. I absolutely love the book. So what's the what's the like not the main plot? Oh yeah, I, I guess what, what's the main plot of what's happening? Is is it just that Ash Williams is trying to find the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, uh, the Book of the Dead? Okay. And, so I guess uh, it makes sense that it's its own thing because in the movies, I haven't seen them, but in the movies he has it, right? Or he's trying to find it in the movies? In the movies, the Necronomicon causes all, okay. all, all the right. mayhem, but it also can reverse all the mayhem. Okay. And the first two movies are set in a cabin, so the Necronomicon is always there. Okay. okay. In this, <clears throat> in this uh, book, he has to find it. He's in this completely new reality mm -hmm. for him. Okay. He, he doesn't know anything about Spider-Man, which is another great scene where those two share. Uh, he doesn't know anything about Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, nothing. Yeah. Uh, so he has to find it, and so he goes to like the Sanctum Sanctorum to, oh my word. to like try and find it. And yeah. then somehow he finds out that it's in Latveria with Doctor Doom. Yeah. Because he's, he's also... Uh, He's like a step behind Doctor Strange in terms of like sorcer mm -hmm. sorcery. Yeah. So he has to go there and he has to save like the last bit of mankind that's trapped in Latvarian in the Latvarian basement. 
or like the uh, the castle basement. Okay. Because Doctor Doom, even though he's like a really bad guy to us, yeah, he's kind of seen as like just this glorious human being by Latverians, and he's very huh. nice to him. He's not like he's not like Kim Jong Un, where it's like an iron fist. Like he is yeah. absolutely like this wonderful leader. Okay. But he's a dick to everyone else because he wants to rule everything else at the mm. same time. So that's the way he is in the book. Yeah. Okay. That's the way he is in Marvel Comics. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 Uh, yeah. It ends very weirdly as well. Yeah. Uh, after, after he rescues mankind through this portal, uh, the portal, he randomizes the portal to go to a different universe. Uh -huh. So oh he can gosh. just like, live. Like the DC like that. He just, he's going to live a different life or try and help another world or whatever. Huh. Uh, and so he steps through and he's like, ah oh man, it's another dump. He's still in New York City. And then he turns around and they're zombified werewolf versions of the Marvel <laughs> Universe. <laughs> That's where it ends. Nice. Oh man, that sounds wild. It's it's great. That sounds really really that sounds like a great read if you're into weird stuff and then Marvel stuff and not then the combination the crossover of those two. That sounds really really Yeah, it's very I wish strange. I read it before we started, I was not have any time. I know, it, it's it's so <laughs> weird. I might ask you after this. Um how is the Marvel Universe portrayed in this? Because this would have been, this would have been, this would have been pre, uh, cinematic universe. It, it sounds like. I think it might have come out around the same time as Iron Man. So it, okay. there's not like no MCU like yeah, okay. bleeding or anything at this yeah. point. Uh, so it's portrayed very accurately. Like if you've read like Civil War, mm -hmm. uh, it feels a lot like that. Okay. Uh, it feels like this big crossover. But it's even more than just like people throwing punches. It's just like people are dying. People, yeah. people you know and love, characters that you grew up with, are just being like zombified and eaten, or just zombified and eating. Yeah, it's crazy. It sounds. I mean, bananas. the Marvel Zombies line in itself is absolutely insane as well. Because yeah, it's like the Avengers <clears throat> and Galactus and like get his cosmic abilities and then yeah. go out. Into the larger universe to expand their yeah. pl their appetite, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. But the does Thanos have anything in any of this? Thanos has nothing to do. Interesting. He would probably eventually be eaten, but he has nothing. He to snaps do and his finger falls off because he's a <laughs> <laughs> He probably doesn't have the uh, Infinity Gauntlet at this point. Right. Yeah, this sounds like this sounds like post Avengers, but pre Infinity War. And, like, it being its own thing is probably, like, a really good idea. Yeah, it is. It's very contained. I kind of wish that it would go a bit longer, but it leaves in just the right place because if you if you know the Evil Dead <sighs> movies, mm -hmm. they always end in a terrible place. The yeah. first one ends with Ash being possessed. That was supposed to be it. It was him being, like, possessed. Uh, and then the second movie, it ends with him being sent back to medieval times mm. and that was going to be the end of it and then army of darkness okay that's the exception it ends uh in present day and him being a hero mm -hmm. but the original plan was for him to be sent way to the future hmm. into a post-apocalyptic future <laughs> and it it feels like a cop out uh it's not like doing that movie, that kind of yeah. The not the first game. The first game does take, does take place on Mars. It does. The original Doom, like nineteen ninety two. Right. And then the twenty sixteen Doom is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for Doom Eternal. Cause yeah. Like it takes place. Easy. It's hell on Earth. Yeah. That sounds awesome. It's gonna be on the Switch and Xbox and PlayStation and PC and all that. Definitely we got a PC instead of Switch. But, same. But the, those are great movies and I highly recommend them. If you love over the top gore, mm -hmm. like it's not even scary. But they, yeah. Well, let me rephrase that. It's eighties gore. It's very much 70s, 80s gore, mm. uh, but the thing about it, it's not scary to some people, mm. but it's terrifying to others. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how Sam Raimi does it, but like he mixes it. He's always he really mixes good it that. very well. He has like these gruesome makeup effects, but That's it's coincided with like these 
dumb lines that yeah. are intentionally dumb. Right. Yeah. And it's great. Like, uh, a good example is a scene in Drag Me to Hell where there's this demon mm. that just, he he kind of looks like a, de- a deadite, which is like their version of like a zombie mm-hmm. in, uh, in, the mov- in the Evil Dead movies. But he he looks terrifying, and he's floating, and he's about to like murder. Excuse like us, Mister Charger. The We're prof- talking about movies. Hello, McFly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the demon is like floating, and he's about to attack the the main character, and then he starts doing like this little dance, and it's great. <laughs> it's just like. The, the style that he has is like both goofy and horrifying at the same yeah, time. Yeah, right. it's great. That sounds great. That sounds really good. We'll have to watch those sometime this month. I have them. <gasps> on Blu-ray? We're watching this month. Blu-ray player? I'm a, I'm a PS3. Oh. I, have, I have to get a power cable for it. Yeah. I'm neglected to do that. No. So, that would should be the issue. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. Just, uh, it's, it's a good read. So what's the title of the book and where can people buy it? Uh, it's um, Marvel Zombies versus the Army of Darkness. Okay. Uh, where can people buy it? Uh, I bought it on Amazon. All right. But I'm sure you can probably find it on Walmart.com. Mm-hmm. I'm or, worried about a digital copy. Also, I'm I'm, almost I, I, I'm digital pretty copy. sure there's going to be a digital copy. Because if I if I were to start reading comic books, which I really want to start reading comic books, only because like it's good to read. Yeah. And if I have to read anything, I'd rather read about stuff that I'm actually interested in. And pictures. Yeah. And pictures and pictures well, also. I'm going to start rereading. I'm going to start doing like uh, end of war cap for the Great War. Yeah. Like I'm going to read all of the information and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to use my iPad. I bought my iPad to read off stuff eventually. Yeah. And I've like. I read a lot of manga on my tablet. I might end up doing that. So. My iPad reading would be perfect for that. So I might, I might check that one out. I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. definitely going to check out. Uh, Comixology is the best app for that because mm-hmm. like it, it doesn't just give you like the page yeah. to read. And you have to zoom in, but it goes panel to panel. That's cool. Okay. Which is very nice. That is Sometimes nice. there's a couple glitches where you don't get like a whole picture. Yeah. Uh, but that's just like that's an exception to the to the standard. I'm getting sleepy now. We're not doing dumb bits at the beginning of all of this and like just messing <laughs> yeah. around. I'm getting tired. I'm like starting to calm down. <clears throat> all right. Should I go next? Yeah. Go ahead, gentlemen. Ooh. Mine's a real weird one, and I've known about this for a while. Okay, so the title of mine, oh, and yeah, mine's classic. a YouTube video. Yeah. Mine's a YouTube video. And, and Vimeo as well. And Vimeo, yeah. I think it was originally a Vimeo, a Vimeo thing. It's weird. It is a real weird one, and I love watching it two or three times a year. Uh, it's called Possibly in Michigan. Possibly. And I can't find, like, could legit. Be in Texas. Who knows? I can't find, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> except for the thing. Uh, <laughs> it is a 12 minute long horror music video that came out January 1st originally January 1st 1983 it's directed by Cecilia Condit music is composed by Karen Skladny Skladani the editor is David Narizny and the cast is Jill Sands Karen Skladny and Bill Bloom um damn it's weird it's a real <laughs> weird one mm-hmm. This one here smells great. Which one? Mm. It's I I still haven't necessarily figured out what the first part's about, but like the the later half, it's like it's kind of obvious. That's the thing. Uh, I'm going to use tvtropes.org.org for this. Dot org. Uh, possibly in Michigan is a 1983 short film written and directed by Cecilia Condit. It explores a predator, predatory, often self-destructive aspects of love and romance, but also takes a dark route of female friendships, all sort of with a liberal splash of surreal horror. It can be viewed here, uh, which doesn't work for you guys. <laughs> film introduces us to two friends, Sharon and Janice, who surely, who's thoroughly banal afternoon at a shopping mall. Banal. This means like what? Banal. Okay, I guess, I guess it makes sense. Banal afternoon at a shopping mall is often overshadowed by a looming sinister presence. Who is a man? There's a man in like a a sometimes pig, sometimes dog or wolf, yeah, like mask. A wolf mask. And then, and then a sometimes, one point. sometimes in like a um, um, 1970s style James Bond mask. The man is always wearing a tuxedo. He's always very well dressed. 
Yeah, he's well, he's very spiffy. He's a very, very spiffy young man. Um, and he's following these two girls. Um, it's so weird. It's yeah. so weird. I just, I, I just watched people. it too, like just to refresh myself because yeah. it's been like a month or so since yeah. I've seen it. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a weird one. It's a real I, weird I love one. the. Uh, the frog scene where he has a frog mask and then he's, <laughs> it's like, oh, he forgets who he is. Sometimes he thinks he's a frog who yeah. thinks he's a beautiful <clears throat> prince charming. Yeah, it's, that's it's that's great. like one of the lines is brought up is like this man is always like changing himself and who he is. I guess to like, yeah. conf- I don't know if it's like to confuse his victims or like Maybe to- schizophrenia. It could be. I thought that one. I immediately thought that one. Or not immediately. After I watched it a couple times. My hair coming out. Yeah, you're going to bald. Anyway. <laughs> oh, no, it's just stressing me out. Yeah. Um, oh, no. He's got a scratch. He's it's a weird stuff. one. My favorite parts of it are, like, the music and just the overall... It's not even high reality. And my favorite type of comedy is things that are absurd, ridiculous, or heightened. Oh, no. No, 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 silly. No, no, to dry no, it. No, no, no. But no, it exploded, no. and they were both found dead. She must have been out of her head. And this is not that. This is like 100% in real life, 100% believable, and it's just a suspended or a heightened um, amount of horror Surreal. Sur- yeah, surreal. One hundred percent surreal. It's one hundred percent surreal, and it's like, it's not even like scary jump scare like we have now. Right. But it's, there's no jump scares. No jump scares at all. It, it's a deeper. It uh, is. It it touches deeper. on 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 human psychology and and like the human mind about like, oh, someone could be following me and want to eat me. Yeah. And also the discordant music. But those yeah. are those are the best horror movies or horror yeah. anything. Yeah, one of the best horror I, things that has ever existed is, uh, I think at least, is the, um, oh, when did it come out, 2014? Oh. 2014 PT. PT, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it might have been late 2014, early 2015. Yeah. It was going to be for a Silent Hills game, and that's one of the scariest things. That oh, yeah, that one. Remember that game? That has, yeah. A, that has a few jump scares, but... The, it has it, a few jump scares, but it's overall is not jump scare. Yeah, yeah it's... Yeah, uh, jump scares are I'm not... I'm getting chills just thinking about the game. Jump scares are not in themselves uh, lazy. It's yeah. lazy when you use them too much, yeah, or whenever they're the only if the only horror is jump scares. Then yeah, one thing I liked about it yeah. is that it had a few jump scares. Yeah, but it was all atmosphere. It was all it was like mostly an atmospheric thing. I like that a lot. And this one is one hundred percent atmosphere. Um, the video is I think like eight to eleven minutes long. It's somewhere I around think, there. I think it's, it's long. Minutes. I think it's a very nice length of time for this also. Like, yeah. I don't think that you could really do any longer or any shorter for something like this. If it was shorter, it would not hold Strange. the amount of weight. If it was too long, if it was long, it'd be too long. Like, okay, we get it. This guy is going to go to these these women. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm not going to spoil it because I want everybody to watch it. Right. But the twist at the end uh, is one of the top 10 greatest anime twists of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. You I didn't watch Mojo? <laughs> <laughs> watch Mojo? If I got a video for you guys. Uh, I think the twist, Steal it again. I think the double twist at the end is great. Let me read some other stuff from this website because I just yeah, I just recommend everyone want to watch the video. Don't take it by really. It's not like even one hundred percent like this is disturbing. It is, but like it stays it stays with you in a sense afterwards. Where you're like, you remember that video? Yeah, I remember that video. It creeped me the fuck out. And then yeah. like that's usually where it is. Like you talk about it in this setting where people have a camera and lights it up. Uh, uh, as friends do. <laughs> I, I really hope that the people that made the short film... There's no talent what they're doing now. I know. I really want them to, like... Do more go, stuff. Do more stuff like that. That that would be great. Yeah. They would have a huge career if they went into horror or something. They really would. And I'm almost positive this was done for, like, a school project or something. Yeah, because it's like a... Un- like, they have a university tag at the end, and it's oh, funded they? by... Well, yeah, like different places. Cal Arts was that? <laughs> no, Cal it was in, it actually was in Michigan. Okay. Um, I'm looking on the website. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 12 minute, 12 minute long. Uh, it being in the '80s and having one of those like the music is great. Mm-hmm. The music is very very well done, uh, and I love that there's a credit there's a composer credit also. 
Yeah. Because the music 100% builds more of the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. If there was no music, or if the music was not... If it were normal next music... To, it wouldn't be the same. It yeah. wouldn't be good. Um, it would 100% throw off the weird vibe. Because it starts with the music. The video begins, and I'll throw that like a few seconds up right now. But the video begins with just the music, and and the the premise. Yeah. And it's like, it's just so good. It's so good. I recommend everyone to watch it. Uh, and I honestly can't say enough about it. If you're up late at night, uh, <sighs> definitely time. watch. Perfect this. timing. The best time to watch it, and if you if you haven't seen this, watch it more than once. I watch it at least four times a year, just so I'm like. Damn, that's good. Uh, I showed this to Ethan, who showed it to his boss at work, and then his boss at work showed it to, with Ethan there, three other people that worked with Ethan. Uh, show it to your kids. Show it to your kids. Your friends. Show it to your friends and family. Show it to your grandma. Uh, show it to grandma. Show it to your grandpa, who's uh, bound to a seat. Uh, <laughs> Bro- not, broken not ankles good. will do that to you. Yeah, they will. Uh, but I recommend everyone to watch this. It's, it's, it's great. It's wonderful. I want, I want to know more about it, and I want uh, that team of people, of magnificent people, to make something else, make something new. I would love that. Let's see, 83, so 23 would be 40 years? So it's 35 years old, 36 years old. Everyone in there is old now. Yeah, because they're all probably around our age, maybe a little bit older than yeah. us. Plus, people look different back then. Yeah. Yeah. So... All right, time for mine. Mine's less media. Yeah, go ahead. Ready yours. Mine is just like a conspiracy theory I found online that's kind of interesting. Um, so this is regarding the Dogon, 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 Dogon. 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 Uh, the people. They are a uh, ethnic group living in the central plateau region of Mal- Mali, Mali, in uh, West Africa. Uh, yeah, their population is between four hundred thousand and eight hundred thousand. They speak the Dogon languages, which evidently there are more than one. Anyway, so the reason they're uh, of note, besides being a cool African tribe, <coughs> is their interesting astronomical beliefs. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a French anthropologist named Marcel Marcel Griale 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 one might say Griale. Uh, and several other authors, they have claimed that the Dogon traditional beliefs, their religion, uh, incorporates details about as astronomical bodies that could not be observed with the naked eye, and mm-hmm. they don't have the technology to observe it like normally. So it's kind of just like a theory that aliens came down and told this one group of people about uh, stars that you can't right, see, like, yeah, and, like actually know about. Like they knew that. Um, the new stars that were binary, and you can't tell if a star is binary just by looking at it. Yeah. It's too far away, and they knew about multiple binary stars and stuff like that. And so the French guy, Marcel, <laughs> that we mentioned earlier, or he did multiple different uh, field missions, studying <clears> them, <throat> talked a whole lot, and they talked about um, Sirius, that's the star, the binary star. They knew that Sirius has two companion stars. Uh, Even though they couldn't see them? Yeah, they couldn't see them, huh. but they knew about them. They called them Hotolo and Emeyatolo, which was what we call them is Digitaria and Sorghum. Which I just is a better name. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the first and second companions of Sirius A, uh, Sirius in the Dogon system of naming formed one of the foci for the orbit of a tiny star, which, like, they had no way of knowing. They couldn't actually see that, but they knew that somehow. So well, how'd they write all this stuff down? Or how they log all this stuff? Or, uh, oral tradition. Huh. Like, you know, like aboriginals and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or, oral tradition has, has been what is keeping humanity alive. Yeah, for all this time. Uh, and they also claimed that they... Or the uh, anthropologists claimed that the Dogon knew about the rings of Saturn and the moons of Jupiter. Again, which you can't you see. You can't see. Okay, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of uh, it's wild. That's really, really wild. And there's just a whole uh, conspiracy theory. Wait, when was this? His, his first trips 
were in 1931. Okay. And his last trip, let's see, was in 56. 56. Which I'm going to. Or he left so in 56. In, in West Africa? In West Africa, in Mali. In Mali. I wonder in what relation that is and how long it's been going around if perhaps the Greeks or the Egyptians. It's possible. It says, let's see. That's my. That's both, my in oral tradition, they never really say. I'm like, sure it's, it's never like, recorded. Yeah. In oral tradition, how long they've known that. Yeah. So I, it doesn't say here either. I imagine for some stuff like that, like there's just no way of, of capturing how long they've known that. I mean, they are in Africa, and Egypt's just Egypt is. Well, if they're in West Africa, that's an entire desert away. Uh, yeah, that's true. And you cannot entire, pass the Sahara. An that entire desert, true. almost the size of the United States. Like people very rarely, especially back then, people would very rarely pass the Sahara. Even that now, is, it's like that's an ordeal. Even now, yeah, back then, it's uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, but it makes me wonder yeah. if the if the Egyptians, you know how how fucking wild the Egyptians were, like right. they were one hundred percent. Even in like three thousand BC, I think sooner than that, maybe they, they knew what. They knew a lot of astronomical I mean, stuff. They built the pyramids, well, which are barely not square. Like they're like, they're yeah. huge and they're like less than like, um, I don't know. A, I don't about, know a couple, measure, a couple but, millimeters. Yeah, for, I don't know about millimeters, but it's really really close. It's pretty close. Perfectly square. Which how, how you do that? And really then also, is. and then also, they have it set towards really? like, the, vis- visibly, not invisibly, right. like with this, right. but like visibly, they have it set to be in the shape of, um. I don't know if it's a a star pattern. Or, I don't know. I'm not sure. The pyramids of Giza. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pyramids, and then all that stuff is like lined up to be in a specific thing. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think the way it is is whenever the sun's casting on the pyramids mm-hmm. at a certain time, like it makes a certain shape. Yeah. And that would be where other pyramids would have been. Okay. Or was it were broken would have been? I think. I could be working on that. Right. Huh. But the way the pyramids are built is extremely fascinating. Yeah. And it's not like ancient aliens or. Um, um, I love is, that show. Yeah, <laughs> or Israeli slave labor, or Israelite slave labor. It's one hundred percent like some uh, some bored motherfuckers were like talking and like they had math and shit. And in the wet season, they would have like these huge limestones, which floats when wet, no matter how big it is. They have these huge limestones wet, and then they would have like water tubes, ginormous water tubes, shoot water and the stones up above, and then they would have them planted there. Hmm. The way they built it, and the BBC has a. Pretty comprehensive video on it. It's extremely interesting. I love to see how, how they built British it. programming is like very yeah. Oh very, yeah. It's very thought provoking, and then our history channel yeah, the history channel is like yeah, I I mean, aliens did it. England also has that. If you watch any videos about the English parliament parliamentary system, uh, it's mostly yo mama jokes, <laughs> yeah. and they're the leaders of the fucking government. <laughs> yeah, no. I ask my mother. Oh, I think I know what my mother would say. I think she'd look across the dispatch box and she'd say, put on a proper suit, do up your tie, and sing the national anthem. If we're talking, Mr. Speaker. have stuff like the Egyptian documentary on how not even an Egyptian documentary the documentary on how they built the pyramids yeah which is like this entire documentary you have things like that we're here in the United States you have like it's really good I'll I'll have things after this but then you have things uh, in the United States that are also really good like you have the collaboration with Planet Earth uh, and then also David Attenborough and other people and you have things like Netflix and all the great Netflix documentaries and great shows and then you have ancient aliens. So there's yeah. good with the bad, like most things. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it's very funny where it's like, there was a there was a there's an edit. We're getting out. I'm I'm purposely being off topic. But it like it was like an edit of um, David Attenborough doing doing his wonderful thing talking about animals, and then it cuts to like Theresa May uh-huh. and the and the court system like making fun of one of the guy's hairs. Nice. And all of them are like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> cuts to that right after. Because that's exactly how it is. It's 100% well. how it is. And anyway, this is pretty interesting. I love the British. So, the uh, Dogon. I'm going to pronounce him Dogon. Dogon. I might. I, I think Dogon. it's. Dogon. 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 There's no E at the end. So, it's Dogon. 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 Huh. I don't I'll know. Dogon because that's like usually how African stuff like that works. Right. Uh, then you have another star in the series system, Emma Yah. Or they described it as a star larger than Sirius B, but lighter and dim in magnitude. 
1995, it was confirmed that such a star existed. But they talked about it. It was in their oral tradition. In 1995, the it was they, discovered. we found it yeah. with our it, technology, but well, they've yeah. already known about it. Yeah. It makes me wonder at least the if they somehow did glass. If like, they somehow well, made telescopic yeah. glass. But even then, you can't even with you can't see that kind of star with a magnifying or with a telescope. You yeah, know, a magnifying glass. Because they they used um, <laughs> gravitational studies to discover it. They discovered it with okay. gravi- <laughs> gravitational studies, not with a telescope. That's really weird. Yeah. That's a weird one. Now that that's the only I can't think of anything other than aliens. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like it can't what be. What else could it possibly be? Yeah. That's really really weird. Yeah, it's very interesting. So it's one of those things where it's like where we advanced before something happened. Yeah. Well, I was talking about like uh, like I saw about the thing where what if there was a species smarter than humans that was around before? Yeah, you mentioned it last night. The extinction of the dinosaurs, like they were like more intelligent than humans, but they weren't around long enough to actually do anything of note. Yeah. And then they went extinct when the dinosaurs went extinct, and nobody would ever know about so, it. So yeah. wait, like, a that'd be wild. That'd be wait a minute. Wild. If you guys have seen Doctor Who, yeah. Uh, could it be? The reptilian race. The reptilian race. That, uh, Indeed. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a reptilian race that like evolved alongside humans. Yeah. But they were much more advanced, and they decided to literally burrow underground <laughs> yeah, as, the, as they kept going. <laughs> but they are ages more advanced than we are. That's a spooky one. Yeah, there's like yeah. a whole thing that they go down and like, visit them and like... They yeah, have, they have cool guns. It's pretty cool. Oh, and then one of the one of the female, uh, one of the females of the of the race, like mm. somehow came to the surface in like the eighteen hundreds, and has like a wife. Like she's there's a lot of gay people in Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> so they're they're married, and then they're also she's like this detective, and she mm. becomes yeah, the inspiration for. Sherlock Holmes in their world. And I think it's so funny. That's really, that's really funny. And her wife is just Watson. That's great. <laughs> Except yeah. more badass. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. It's not hard to be more badass than Watson. Except, Except for she, two loves. Yeah. Watson. Yeah. That's true. Well, I mean, and Watson in the book, too, is like a fucking like, veteran and all mm-hmm. that. Oh, yeah. He's and the original like, one. He was a vet. He, he was, was in the, the Vietnam. Or he was Afghan. It depends on which issue it is, obviously. Yeah. I like, like like the newer one with Martin Martin Freeman and uh, right. Ben Cumberbatch. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Afghanistan. Afghanistan, Afghanistan, which makes sense. Like he's not going to be part of that. A Boer War better than 150 years ago. That's me. Uh, he, is the original one with Baron of what war is the original one? Is it the Boer War? I remember he came from Vietnam. Was it Vietnam? It, it was a Vietnamese war. No, not the uh, Vietnam War. Obviously. Yeah, not yeah. our Vietnam War, yeah. but it was a war like in the 1800s. Vietnam. Do what? In the 1800s one. Yeah, they're, they're not like minor some, opium. I guess it, I, I it guess was some that. sort of. Uh, oh no, it would be around the time, wouldn't it? Yeah, the, the, the eight, late eighteen eighties. There's, there's a long stretch of time where there's a lot of where lot of England was selling opium to. <laughs> well, yeah, Asia, but it's like China. before World War One, the Great War. There was always like constant conflict. Oh, yeah. There is there isn't so much now, obviously, but it's like in between World War One and then like around like the nineteen eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's still obviously World War Two. But there's like a ton of like small. We have to expand the empire. Them. Pretty much. Oh, Britain. 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 But yeah, Mercy. Uh, yours is a real wacky one. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a wild one. Wild, yeah. This is wild. realistically wacky. Mine's yeah, like, just. Yours is fun. Wacky. And then mine's like, like. Wild and like. Scary. Like, <laughs> yeah. Scary wacky. Yeah, scary wacky. Yeah. Oh, was. Ah. was. I forgot to actually get mine prepared till last night. So I was uh, searching online trying to find. Good things yeah. that I found that. So. He was talking about politics and got upset. I'm well, on X and went through some conspiracy theories. Were, were you going to pick something else besides this? Uh, there was a few I uh, had to choose from. There, there was one, some kind of that Japanese thing that we were talking about. Japanese thing? The one where. Um, ah! Oh, it's the woman. It's the woman that, like, uh, if you're, like, polite to. or Oh, it, the, yeah. the mouth? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I've yeah, heard yeah. of that one. There's yeah. a lot of ghost stories. There's a lot of Japanese ghost stories like that. Japanese where, ghost stories of, are. Wow. Horrifying. I can't remember Horrifying. her name. But everybody's cool with them in Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, but if you think about it, it's the reverse here because we're yeah. like, oh yeah, grandma got eaten by a wolf, and like other other places yeah, are like, that is barbaric. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's like the exact opposite. Uh, how about actually a ghost story for you? Or not a ghost story, a scary story. Uh-huh. So you may have seen this already. I don't. I'm not sure. I may have sent it to you before. I know everything. But I still gotta tell it for the I lovely audience. I know yeah. everything. So um, there was a man who um, was, he was. He just got off work. He was pretty tired. He was ready to get to sleep, and you go up to his room and get to sleep. So he went to his apartment and was waiting for the elevator. You know, whenever the elevator, he was the elevator arrived. And it opened up, and then he, as he walked in, another man walked in behind him. He was kind of like hidden. He was like kind of wearing like a cloak. He couldn't see his face. And he like wouldn't like look at him, you know, make eye contact. So it was kind of awkward just sitting there. So he tried to make some friendly conversation, but the guy didn't say anything. So you know, they went up to his floor, and he got off. The guy stayed on the elevator. And so he went back to his room, went to sleep. And it wasn't a big deal. So the next day, he woke up, got out of his bed, you know, got ready for the day, ready for work and all that. Whenever he had a knock on his door, he opened it, and there was a policeman. And the policeman said that there was a murder in the building, and if he had seen any suspicious people around, or like any reason to, you know, like if he has any information. And the guy, he was ready for work, he didn't want to have to sit around and be questioned and be late for work, so he said, no, I didn't see anything. I don't know anything about anything. So so the the police like, all right, well, I'll uh, be going then. Thank you for your time. And he left. And as so he continued getting ready, you know, he was sipping his coffee and the news came on. And, it's, and it was actually a picture of his apartment building. And it said that the person who committed the murder was just caught just recently. And it had the picture uh, on the screen of the culprit. And it was mm-hmm. a policeman that just questioned him. Was the murder? Oh my fuck. <laughs> That's no. Really awesome. yeah, no. Because he was, he was seen if there were any witnesses. Oh! Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So it wasn't the weird guy in the. Elevator. No, it was the weird guy. The weird guy was a policeman. That's stupid. No. You always do this. No. Yes, you always uh, do this. You stupid. always do this. It's no. Scary. They agree. No, they don't. They quit watching after I, after you explain your thing. So, <laughs> I want to bring up another bit of obscure media. <laughs> it's this little movie called The Shining. <laughs> 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 all right, you, all right, you boys. Thank you very much. Are you the ring? <laughs> Trevor, thank you for setting up this location. I love this. I love this fucking apartment. It's warm. The warm. It's, it's hot. It's warm. I'm so glad the air conditioning man came here to fix it. I drink all the water. And... This is my sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad the air conditioning man. <sighs> Me too. Well, thank you two so much for coming here. And so, boys, that's how I met Sister Macy. All right, boys. Uh, I'm sorry to say the truth of the matter is I'm not here to fix your air conditioning. Huh? What? I'm here to steal your wallets. No! Oh yeah. no! Give me those shoes, pretty boy! <laughs> oh my gosh, whatever are we going to do? Ah! Please don't shoot the old man or anything. Give me your. Uh, give me your pension check. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Sonny, I can't walk! Give me uh, your EBT. You know, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, the old man owns this entire building, and we're in a big city. Give and me I'm, your deed! And I'm just the one that's helping with his medicine. What Sorry, old doing? man. <laughs> you just throw me under Wait. that bus. Medicine? Well, I think that's what happened whenever... Never mind. What kind of medicine? Good medicine. I'm also the only one some of that medicine. Alright. Uh, give me your money, or I'll fucking... Ah! <laughs> A robot leg! <laughs> Holy you shit! Better fucking believe it's it. It's RoboCop! <laughs> It's a quarter of RoboCop. No!